The next story is on um, the anti-LGBT um, bill in right. Parliament. Now, let me just read what we have on City News and Record. There's a number of papers tackling different angles, and so we'll look at those as well. Parliament approves custodial sentence of three to five years for promotion of LGBTQ+. Now, um, Parliament has approved a custodial sentence um, of a minimum of three years and a maximum of five years for the willful promotion, sponsorship, and support of LGBTQ plus activities. Now, persons caught in the act would also be subjected to a minimum sentence of uh, six months and a maximum of three years. Now, parliamentary during <clears throat> during parliamentary proceedings on the clause by clause amendment of the bill on the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values, the MP for Ningo Pram, Pram Sam Nati George, explained what created the confusion was the establishment of an advocacy for the promotion of the activities. That is what Ghanaians are against. Nobody is interested in what you do in your bedroom. And so the punishment for one court in the act uh, yesterday, uh, Friday 7th, is to be a minimum of six months um, and maximum of three years. However, for anyone in a willful promotion, sponsorship, or support of the agenda, um, the punitive measure is that is, for that is minimum three years and maximum five years. So if you're caught in the act, it's six months minimum, uh, um, three years max. But if you are promoting. found promoting and sponsoring, then three years minimum, five years max. And uh, Sam George makes a comment and says, what you do in your bedroom is none of our business. Right. But if you happen to be found out, yeah. then these are the various things. Uh, and, and you know, let me put a very clar uh, some clarity on this issue. Mm. On that score, even the one that our society accepts, yeah. okay, that's the uh, relationship between a man and a woman, yeah. it is not as if it is only this LGBTQ that has been selected for punishment. Okay. If a man and a woman yeah. married, yeah. are caught having sex in public. So they also yes. face the laws. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think mean, people must just see this as the, the, some, somebody pushed some knob and it has caused all these. Mm. So perhaps the, the constitution did not know that some group someday will come out to do this. That's why they didn't even bother themselves to talk about mm. it when a man and a woman is, uh, sorry, a man and a man is caught mm. doing that, they will get this punishment. Because if a man and a woman, even married, yeah. what is accepted by our tradition and our religion, yeah. Yeah. they will still be punished for if having they are publicly, publicly caught having sex. Mm. So look, for me, this whole thing about LGBTQ, when I was in my first degree, reading my first degree, what I was told about these practices was that it was a sexual abnormality. Okay. That's, we termed it sexual paraphilia. You know, that's sexual ab abnormality. And then over the years, research and some groups came out to say, they have another thought. Well, but when you come to Ghana, it is against our religion, against our culture, and our constitution frowns on it. Mm. So that's why these rules have been set now. You know, because we didn't even know people were taking it to that level. Look, I won't be, uh, I mean, I'm not a coward, and I won't lie to anybody I didn't know they were gays. Mm. Okay? Because in, 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 I, I served on a presidential commission for HIV and AIDS. Right, AIDS Commission. Mm -hmm. I was in the National Youth Executive, so I was okay. representing Ghanaian youth on that board. Okay. M man, man having sex with man, there was a provision there to for to for uh, the nation to give drugs to those people. And when you, the, when you look at the schools of thought about what brought about HIV and AIDS, it was actually mostly found among men having sex with men. Yeah. In the U.S. and other parts of, of the world. Yeah. So I mean, so it is nothing hidden. Okay, so let's not joke about it. The facts are there that men having sex with men, that, I mean, HIV and AIDS, the antecedents, and the cost elements. Look, when you look at people, look at it from the surface. Too mature people wanting to do whatever they want. No, 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 no. The Constitution says sexual issues is a private matter. Nobody cares what happens in somebody's bedroom. Mm. People can have their perceptions. We don't care. But so as long as our religion and our culture, we have to protect it. Every country has their, their own. 
Yeah. We are protecting ours. No country whatsoever can come to this country, Ghana, and come and push their culture on our head. Especially when some countries do not even want to accept polygamy. <laughs> okay? Polygamy, a man trying to get two wives. Another country says no. Yeah. And we respect that. And that country will try and come and push something very, very, very unchristian, unmuslim, I mean, untraditional, culturally outlawed on us. Look, the rules they've set there. For me personally, mm. I see it on the other side rather as an ab abnormality, a psychological problem. So there should be a way of correcting them. And that said, I, I think me, I won't go far about it. Mm. There are cost elements, people who do that, there are disease elements, the cost about it, the, the, the physical body damages that we have to correct. Countries like America with large budgets are, are struggling to, with all our, look, 13 people lost their lives because we couldn't buy dialysis machine. Yeah. I don't have money. In fact, when I say I don't have money, I'm talking about Ghana. We don't have enough money to go and also be managing some of these unwanted diseases. Look, let's focus. Our constitution says no. We are a group of people. Our way of life, our culture says no. Religion, we say no. Mm. If we get to another level and, and evil captures our mind so much that we get confused yeah. and we want to accept it, then that's another day. But for now, I can tell you on authority, about 80 to 90% of Ghanaians do not want even the discussion around it. Let, let's leave it. If you go against the laws, we, it's a constitution, we set our laws. If you go against it, the law of the land will deal with you. But I'm only being pathetic, uh, like I feel pathetic, but I'm only being you know, sympathetic mm. about it that look, when the person finds themselves in that situation, we should rather go and to their aid and then, you know, psychologically treat them back because I think it's an abnormality. But Ghana would be safe. We, we should stay away from, I mean, that discussion. I mean, we shouldn't discuss this thing. We should leave it. We should just leave the laws to work. For me, I'm, I, I, I don't enjoy going around it. All right. Um, Mesa, so what do you make of this, this one? I mean, the... Honorable Member of Parliament, Afeni Makin says, uh, don't jail same-sex offenders. Um, so he's, he's requesting for no non-custodial sentences. Mm. Um, I don't think he's necessarily against sentencing. It's just the custodial sentences that he's speaking about. Mm. Uh, but what do you make of, of all of this? But is he not a Member of Parliament? He is. Is he not the Deputy uh, Majority Leader? Yes, he is. Uh, so if if but it's gone to a vote and this is where the direction is gone yes so, so he can yeah, have his uh, own opinion but uh -huh. so he was in parliament when the thing came and mm. he should have worked harder to to get uh, his uh, his views across i mean when it comes to this lgbtq issue you know i think i'm a bit conflicted because um uh, my traditional opinion as a Ghanaian, as a Christian, does not support the LGBTQ mm. and its activities. But then again, I'm also a human rights activist, and I also look at it from the human rights point of view mm. and how, um, how we can reconcile, how, how we can reconcile both. Okay. You know, yeah. and, and I, I feel that um, um, we should look at the, the, the sanction regime with respect to the law a bit more carefully. Um, is it true that our prisons, the nature it is promote, in itself promotes the activities of LGBTQ as we speak currently? Hmm. Interesting question. Is it true? Mm -hmm. If that is true, then giving custodial sentence to people who are known or convic convicted of LGBTQ crimes I mean, are going to be exposed to those conditions in the prisons, which will facilitate even their involvement in it. And at the end of the day, you may end up not solving the problem you want mm. to solve because the, the, the entire rationale for punishment is uh, deterrence mm. and rehabil rehabilitation. Yeah. And so you'd want to achieve both in, in that regard. And in, in that respect, I think that, um, you know, I may share the same view with Honorable Finio Markin, especially minors and young minors, teenagers, adult, um, young adults, mm. you know, especially. So like before, before 18 or before 21? Yes, before 21. Mm. You know, I, um, 
last week I was reading a story when two students of uh, Presec uh, or some students of Presec had been either suspended or been um, dismissed mm. for alleged homosexual activities. And I look at it and I look at the stories from, from, from the angle where, okay, we've, we, we, we understand that this is a menace. We understand that, uh, for me, I view it purely as a psychological problem for, for, for people who engage in these activities. And so we may want to help them. And um, whether the punishment for students, especially for young people in that regard, is not extremely severe. What is its impact on the academic life, yeah. on their future? Whether, you know, um, um, it, it, the, 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 the the intensity of the punishment in itself does mm. not defeat the rehabilitation purpose of the punishment mm. itself. And so I think that, um, uh, like I said, we need to find a very, very, you know, appropriate way of handling this matter. It's a, it's a, it's a global phenomenon now. Yeah. Um, whether you like it or not, it's going to creep into your culture. It's going to have its, its whole impact. We have taken a national position that as a country, we do not support LGBTQ. As a country, we will not promote or will not endorse its promotion. And for me, I think that the punishment for the promotion should rather be severe, especially for media practitioners, media houses, influential people, mm. people who may want to use their position in the country to influence young people into getting involved in, in this kind of menace. Yeah. I think in that aspect, I, I, I agree that the punishment should, should be severe. But in terms of young, young people who may, out of ignorance, out of youthful exuberance, out of peer pressure, out of whatever reason, may find themselves into those situations, I think we should be, we should be more focused on how to rehabilitate them, how to reform them, instead of how to you know, uh, you know, severely sanction them, which at the end of the day ends up not working. And so mm -hmm. I think that in, uh, we need to find a very good balance when it comes to this matter. Okay. All right.